I don't know. I think that's kind of hot. Hey guys, good morning. Put my mic on. Nice and easy. What's up? Good to see you. So today we're gonna do something really weird for me, anyway. Uh, <laughs> contour drawing, uh, blind contour drawing. So I watched a couple of videos on YouTube about it, and I think I've done this before, like in a, a community college way back in the '90s, when I first uh, stepped foot in, onto a college and took an art class. And I think it was kind of like a warm up, and it looks like that's what it's for. It's kind of trying to warm up your eye and hand coordination. But uh, I don't know. I don't know if it really works or not. I'm so used to doing like circles and uh, uh, geometric shapes and stuff like that to warm up. So this will be interesting. I like the upside down drawing exercises, uh, those seem to work a lot better for me. I would have, I don't know. I just remember being frustrated <laughs> with the contour drawing and I think that's what this is going to do to me today. So I'm just going to take it in stride and have fun with it. And uh, I don't know if something really cool comes out of this, like a really weird abstract drawing. Maybe um, I'll put it on a coffee cup or something. <laughs> so I'm going to use uh, my smooth newsprint and I'm going to use a Sharpie. And it'll probably bleed through it, but I don't, I don't think it'll bleed too much. Um, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. But um, yeah, so the Sharpie, I think that'll show up really nice and strong. Let me check my my stuff here real quick on the stream settings. And how come? Let me make sure this is working over here. Uh huh. So how you guys doing? Let's see. We got Fong in the house, AP, what's up? And, oh, my references. So I posted the references, it's on the link uh, in the description below. And so we'll do, I'll finish um, uh, Dolly over here after we do <laughs> a couple of contours. Uh, so first one's gonna be this uh, full figure. I don't remember who suggested that yesterday, but we're gonna do full figure. And let's see, and then the next one, it's gonna be another full figure, but from the back. So, and I didn't realize until just now that that's gonna be really hard with the hands. <laughs> the fingers, they're like hands on top of a hand, so it's gonna look like a, it's gonna look like a, like two dozen hot dogs probably when I draw it. Oh my gosh, so that'll be fun. So let's do this one, let's get started and Let's see, somebody say hi in the chat to make sure I got my uh, chat reader up and going. I wanna make sure it's hooked in. Let's see, well, actually I can do that, huh? Hi Brad. Let's see if that works. Now I can also check the delay. So that's probably like 10 second delay. Brad! <laughs> yeah, that's probably about a 10 second delay. Oh, and uh, so what I did was I made this weird contraption. Uh, let's see, come over here. So I just took uh, the top of my uh, drawing pad and just cut it up, cut a big shape out from my nose. And Good job, Brad. What's up? And uh, just uh, taped it to my glasses. And this is so I can stay blind because for me anyway, I'll, I know I'm going to look down. So if I can just put this on, I know it looks crazy stupid, but it works. Then I can't see below it, right? So if I can just focus straight ahead and not look down, I'll be, <laughs> I'll be good. Oh, I'm such a dork. All right, so yeah, where's my pen? Uh, let's get right to it. Why waste time? Let's see. Kind of curious to see what happens here. And we got Dolly over here, down here, he'll be He'll be back up after we do a couple of warm-ups, I guess, with a contour drawing. Uh-huh. Oh, yuck, I forgot I put 
I put electrolytes in there. Yeah. Okay. It tastes good, but only when you're ready for it. Let's see. If you expect like fresh water and then you drink something else, it does, ugh, kind of gets you. All right. Except your job appliance. Oh, I don't like the voice. I can't understand it when it's so high pitched. Let me change it. Control panel voice. How about English mail? My lunch break. Somebody's on lunch break. Nice. Oh, Frankie, what's up? You on? You're on lunch break. Lunch break. Um. Oh, job applications. Yeah. So I'm still waiting. Uh, it takes a while to get here back. I got one that says they're going to contact me for an interview. So I'm still waiting. Um, got my phone over here at the ready. So I got three different positions um, at the ready. So hopefully one of them will come through. Meanwhile, I'm doing this job. Blind contour drawing. Okay, so let me find the bottom of my page. Use it. So I'm gonna just rest my hand here at the bottom of the screen so I don't run off the screen. <laughs> this is one of my light. This is. What I want draw from Stargate portrait next. Stargate port. Stargate. Let's see. Uh, let me turn that down a little bit. Blasting me. All right, I'm gonna draw while you guys talk. Um, I'm gonna try to get from here down to here. Okay. All right, so starting now. Oh yeah, another thing too is I can't lift my pen, right? I don't know how I'm gonna do that, but let's take let's take uh, my sweet time. All right, here we go. Starting with the head. <laughs> I'm going to the forehead, nose. So I'm like trying to follow along the contour as best I can. So how am I supposed to do the lips? So I can't, I can't take my pen off the page. Oh my gosh, this is so torturous. This hurts. <laughs> I'm drawing the ear if you can't tell. I haven't looked at it. I'm still looking straight ahead. <laughs> Trying to keep my focus. I gotta get his hairline. Oh shoot, shoot. So now I'm lost, I don't know where to go. So if I follow back up to the top of the head, I think I'm on the back of the bun. Oh my gosh, this is terrible, this is so hard. I'm not breathing either. All right, I'm on the back of the shoulder, supposedly. I'm gonna go down the tricep, to the elbow, forearm. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm in the hand, palm, pinky, uh, I'm gonna do a little crease, uh, I should probably blink a little bit, okay, I'm on the next, the ring finger I think, and I'm trying to do some contours within the form, but man it's hard because, oops, I just, my pen just jumped up a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna do the index finger. Or not, that's the middle finger. Okay, now the index finger, oh my gosh. And then a little notch for the thumb. So now I don't even know where my forearm is. It's lost. Bicep, maybe? And back up into the pec. <laughs> I could be drawing right through the face, I don't even know. And then the second pack coming up. So I'm over the clavicle. Uh, what am I doing? And then that's the uh, far side. Why am I naming out the anatomy? The far side deltoid, <laughs> the tricep, so lame. And then now I'm back down where I think the, the torso is. Backtracking. The aces, <laughs> anterior, superior iliac spine. Um, let's go down to the big muscles of the leg, knee. Oh my gosh, this is so hard. 
Okay, so what do I do here? I guess I just follow that. Doing great, slightly smiling face. <laughs> I wonder what it looks like. Calf, inside of the thigh. I should be somewhere back to where the hand is, hopefully. Other uh, quad of the other leg. And we got that kneecap. Oh my gosh. This is so hard. I can feel my hand shaking too. Okay, I think I'm on the tibia. <laughs> Anterior. Something, something. Coming down. Uh, this might be the big toe. I almost took a peek. I almost took a peek. Caught myself. Big toe. The next little toe. Next toe to that. Oh my gosh. I felt too big. I think I drew that too big. Then the fourth toe. Then that weird little pinky toe that we all have. Oh my gosh. And then I might be on the back of the heel. And then the ankle. <laughs> I think I made the weight leg too wide. I don't know. Maybe it's too thin. I can't really tell. I'm coming up to the back side of the knee. I'm trying to make my way back up to the butt. I don't know. Is the butt right there? Where's the butt? I can't even tell. Okay. So, is that it? I think that's it. Hi. Ah! <laughs> oh, you're so accurate. Foot is perfect, Brent. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> what is this? What is that? <laughs> oh, it's like the best best work I've ever done. Oh, it's so weird looking. Yeah, I couldn't tell. I felt like I either at first I thought I made it too wide. Like I was all oh, oh, I didn't even do the back side of the because I, I went down here and came back up and I forgot about the heel on that far side. Oh, that's hilarious. Did I get the number of toes? Yummy face. Yeah, I think I got the right number of toes. This looks obscene. Ah, oh, so weird. Okay. <laughs> Super frustrating. <laughs> so I forgot, I forgot his uh, one foot. Um, okay, I don't know what, I guess, you just move on to the next one. I know I put a link to the video that uh, I watched on YouTube on how to do this. Um, yeah, I didn't bleed through too much. A little looks like a little um, dot to dot. So I'll just probably take these two off. All right. So there's that. <laughs> now if I just add some color, maybe I can uh, sell it. <laughs> So the next one is going to be the back with those hands. So that's going to be crazy. Yeah, that looks weird. It's very strange. Oh, I got the ankle. Look at how far of the butt. This whole line should be shifted over. I don't know. It's not supposed to be accurate, right? Or is it? I don't understand this. How can you get? How good can you get at this without touching the page or looking at it? Let's see. I'll put that over there. All right, the next one. <laughs> Why am I doing this? Next one. All right, here's our next one. Let me move my uh, my reference over. I have it. I have the reference up on the TV screen across the room, and I have the screen on its side, so I can do like these figures, almost maybe like I don't know, not life size, but about half life size, maybe. All right. Oh my gosh, that was harsh. I'm gonna take a sip of water. Let's see. It's gonna be. Drew here. his face weeks ago. Slightly smiling face. Oh, cool. Foot is perfect. <laughs> um. Oh, you drew uh, the the model, the uh, the figure model, or the or. Um, Dolly. <laughs> Damn, how are you so accurate? <laughs> face. That was the opposite of accurate. Oh, that's funny. Um, all right, let's do the next one before 
Frankie has to go back. He might already Uh-oh. have to go back. Let's see. The model, yeah, he's a good one. I did a, a few of his before. Um, he's got a really cool look. Okay, let's go to the next one. Stop stalling, Brad. Let's just do it. All right. Put on my blind. Let me actually take that next page off. All right. This one's got a little bit of uh, ink on it too, so it's soaked through three pages pretty much. That's okay. I can still use them for warm ups. All right. Okay. Dolly's looking at me with, with, uh, <laughs> with what do you call it? Uh, disapproval. All right, let's see. All right, I got my stupid glasses on. All right, let's see, I've got a page. I'm gonna put my hand down here so I know where the bottom of the, where the bottom of the um, screen is. And the top, right about there. Okay, how do I even start this one? Oh my gosh. There's two negative spaces between the head. Like, oh my gosh, okay. Um, well, I can't look, right? I'm going to cry. Um, what do you guys think? Where should I start? Should I just... Everyone's smiley face. Where should I start? I don't know. Should I start on the left side or right side? Just right at the, the finger, the, the main hand? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. Nice to see your session. <laughs> this is a weird session, that's for sure. So I start with the hand... I think I'm overthinking it, right? I should just go for it. Maybe not even do all the, the individual fingers, just maybe run down and then try to hit the finger outline kind of thing to the elbow. But then I, how do I go back up into the head? Maybe around the elbow and then back up and then the head, hit that triangle and then go across the other side and maybe hit that triangle and hopefully the, the shape of the head will show up somewhere. Maybe I have to follow the spine. I don't know. All right, overthinking. Let's just do it. Okay. okay. Or it thumbs up light skin tone. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> let's see. All right. Deep breath. All right. It's not going to be perfect. Start so. at the bottom. Start at the bottom? Oh my gosh. Who said that? Start at the bottom? Scooby Club, sort at the bottom. Okay, Scooby Club. No, I can't do it. I can't. I gotta start at the top. I can't do it. C A R T. All right, here we go. I'm I'm stalling. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Now we weigh up. Elbow. That finger. The other finger. I'm just going to do the contour Then the other hand finger. Oh my gosh. Uh, I think that's the ring finger of the far side. And then, oh, that's the index. Shoot. Okay. And then we go to the elbow on the far side. Come down the back side of the arm. I think that's the deltoid. I'm just gonna run all the way down. Then we got the hip. And then the booty. Thigh. Your day going. Pez and Serinus. <laughs> if I wanna put some anatomy names in here. Oh, I think I just messed it up. Let's go back down to the calf. Ankle. Uh, toes. This is like the worst position of the foot, too, for me to draw. I hate that perspective where the toes are in the far distance. Let's see, come up the Achilles. Let me stop there, come back down, hit that ankle, come back over to Achilles again, up the calf. <laughs> I think this is where the knee is. Come around. This is going to be my all time lowest rated. 
an easy one. I said bottom, which is polite for but in English. Uh, I have done these. I start with the main curves. Well, I'm in the main curve right now. This is the, uh, what do you call it? What's the scientific name for the butt? Gluteal, oh my gosh, gluteal cleft. I can't remember right now. Okay, I think I'm on the, the heel. H-E-E. Hey Brad, how many hours do you spend drawing in a normal day? Uh, lately not as much as I should. Usually about three right now. Uh, when I'm going the way I want it to go and I'm drawing, it's usually about six. Let's see. <laughs> I lost my track. Where's my, where's that pink uh, toe? Okay, I don't know where that's, okay, I have to go back up into the ankle. I think I'm on her calf. Uh, thigh. Oh, we got foreshortening too. The, I think I'm on her hip. She's all stretched. I hope this matches up to the elbow. Um, how do I get back home? How do I get back here to the deltoid? I think that's it, because I can't go any further. Oh my gosh, what is that? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh, okay, I drew uh, a tail. <laughs> yeah, that I'd drop a sketchbook anytime soon, would buy honestly. Uh, Lol. <laughs> I drew a tail, y'all. Oh my gosh. I think there's an old movie from the 60s called When When Women Had Tails. That's the hand. See, there's no head. <laughs> so usually I spend about one to one and a half hour, but oh. I try my best. Uh, okay, I'm thoroughly amused by myself now. And <laughs> let's move on to the uh, finishing uh, dolly. Oh my gosh. So that's blind contour drawing, huh? That's terribly difficult. That looks so you weird. Draw a bunch of small ones, smiley face. Yeah, I should do like um, like cups, maybe like a water bottle, a cigarette box, <laughs> something. That's so weird. Look at that was supposed to be the uh, the butt, I think, and it turned into a tail. That's so weird. What did I do? Oh, I thought I was backtracking over the same line. That's why. Well, that's not too bad. That looks kind of like a calf muscle. Uh, Smiley face. That's actually this foot, that per, that that terrible perspective of this foot that I hate so much. This there is, is a, the start of a new monster there. There is. <laughs> totally. Uh, that's actually um, about the same... <laughs> that I normally do when I draw the foot in that perspective. All right, so we got those two out of the way. That the experiment is over. I'm, I forced the experiment on you guys. Let's see. So let's go back to our uh, real uh, surrealist extraordinaire dolly and put this one over here. I should make a T-shirt out of that. Let's see. I move this. I'll grab my my other drawing board. All right. This is gonna feel good, probably. <laughs> Getting back to the back to the normal. All right. Let's go over here. Let me grab my reference. I don't have him up here, so let me go grab him off the uh, queue. Live stream stuff. There he is. Handsome double. Shading Dolly. Yeah, shading. Yeah, shading Dolly. That's a good. Maybe I'll use that for the uh, the thumbnail title. That's a good one. Shading Dolly. Let's see. Let me zoom in. Get them all lined up. I think I gotta sit back a little bit. 
So before I do the shading, I'm gonna come in and make the adjustments as I need to. The last, the last uh, go before I move into the shading. I think that's pretty good. Maybe I'll move them over just a touch. All right, so I'm using the Marie's again, the Marie's pencils, um, super cheap compared to pretty much every pencil. And it's super nice, it's really good. It's really smooth and there's not a lot of uh, problems with it, grit or anything like that. And it holds up pretty well to the um, friend went to an exhibition in New York and he was there in the 90s or 80s. Oh, serious? The chat reader is on, aren't you going to turn it off, smiley face? Yeah, I'll turn it off in a second here. So I'm just gonna walk around and make my adjustments. So let me uh, put the chat reader on hold. Let's see, where is it? There we go. And then I'll turn it back on uh, after I get towards the end. So looking at my drawing, I can see a lot of things I want to change. I'm going to bring the hair shape a little bit closer in. Let's see, kind of sweep down. I'm gonna play with the shape of the hair a little bit. I was talking about that before, kinda of make it a little messy looking. Brought his hairline. I'm gonna make that widow's peak really strong. That contour drawing, I don't know, I don't feel warmed up. <laughs> I feel aggravated and pissed off. <laughs> it was fun, but man. The only way to figure out if it would work is to do it every day and see if there's any improvement. It must work. I mean, they use it in school all the time. Let's see. So I like the eyes. I'm gonna bring this jaw in more, which I might have to move the finger over a bit too, which is fine. I drew it once, I can draw it again. I used to get really freaked out when I had to move stuff. Because it's like, it's like you don't want to let go because you spent so much time on the initial drawing. But that's okay. It's all part of the process. You can't be afraid to let an old drawing go. You gotta make your corrections. Let's come down here. I'm gonna Make make this a little bit smaller, basically. And then I can move the finger over just a touch, not too much. Again, I'm not still not sure how much information I'm gonna lose in the shadow side. So I'm thinking about that while I'm repositioning the finger and just walking around the drawing and looking for little tiny corrections I can make last minute before I go into the full value scale or at least into the, um, the initial value. So I like to start off generally with a single tonal mass, filling everything that's dark or in shadow with the uh, pretty much the same value, like a middle range, somewhere in the middle of the, the value scale. And then I'll go in and look for um, occlusion shadows and kind of try to pump up the uh, coarse shadows as well. And then build up my hierarchy of the, the value system uh, from that point on to a finish. Let's bring his hairline over a bit too. 
gets really complicated over here with all the little curly hairs and overlapping the way he has his hair styled. But the main attraction is this mustache. And maybe the, the crazy eyes. So I'm gonna reposition some of these these form shadows, you can see the fingers kind of like pulling that skin over the mandible we were talking about uh, last night. It's kind of cool because it's pulling everything this way. So that those the uh, the Riley rhythms isn't going to be like that nice curve around the muzzle line so much. It's going to be more twisted and pulled. I kind of also want to, I'm thinking about this mouth region right here. I want this to look really kind of like bulbous and, and round and soft in, in the shadows as well. So it's going to be hard to edge down here and then really soft up here, showing the, the roundness of the uh, this area, which is called the, the column of the mouth. So you have this area and then this one right here. And again, it's like kind of being manipulated by his hand position. Yesterday when I was on the live stream, it was thundering and lightning. It was pretty cool. I don't know if you guys could hear it last night. And then it's still hot today. I was hoping it would be like cool because usually after the big thunderstorm, um, at least the last few that we had here, uh, it got really cool afterwards. But it's still, <laughs> it's still hot, hot and humid and wet and just, gosh, so tired of it. And I guess the summer is still not fully here yet. The weather's gonna get hotter, so. Yay. <laughs> All right. So, let's look at the bridge of the nose. I'm gonna kind of pop that up a little bit more, make the bridge of the nose maybe a little bit more extreme, overlap those lines. Actually, I'm gonna bring that down a little bit. Maybe to about right there. Reshape the nostril a little bit. It's a really good reference. It's a lot of um, dark shadows really helps when you're first drawing portraits to understand the form and understand shadows. I'm trying to find uh, references that have these cast shadows in them really helps a lot. First, doing uh, portraits and stuff, and it's a lot easier to explain uh, the portrait itself when you have a lot of shadows showing the forms of the face. When it's like a really soft lighting source and it's everything's kind of blown out, it's a little bit. It's not as great of a um, teaching reference, I think, at least for me, because I want to show like you know different parts of the anatomy and stuff like that. Like this marionette line coming down here has a nice cast shadow, but then at the top you got this nice form shadow curving down into it. And then we can look at this column of the mouth. So we have the ment mental labial crease and it comes down here. And then we have a form shadow sitting on top of that little crease, almost like a cast shadow. I was watching uh, a mo uh, It, the movie It, last night, the 2017 version, and I couldn't finish it. It was just too heavy. <laughs> it was just too much. I, I don't know. I, I watched the, uh, the original back when it came out when I was a kid, and it was scary, but I could still watch it. But this new one, it's too creepy. I can't. I was like, man, I don't want to feel like... I want to watch a movie and have fun. I, I wasn't having fun, so I had to, I had to turn it to something else.
But um, I don't know why, why did that pop in my head for a second? I was gonna say something about it related to drawing and I forgot. Anyway, so there's nice, to, there's this little uh, occlusion shadow right here in this, between this knuckle and the skin of the face. I'm just making a note of that so I can come back. I'm trying to turn this form nice and gently. And remember I was talking about the egg effect too where you have the light, you can see it really well in this portrait where the light source above is really strong on the forehead and as we move down the portrait it gets lighter and lighter or less strong I should say, not lighter because that would, that sounds like I'm trying to say it gets brighter but it's actually the opposite. So the light source that hits the forehead here is stronger and then down here it's a little bit less and then the bottom third of the face um, the light side is going to have more value in it basically so we can come in here and just scumble in all through the light side and think about the, the overall concept of the egg effect and how the light source loses power as it moves down the portrait that's if you have the light source above the portrait. Um, if it's to the side or something like that, then of course it's gonna be the opposite direction, or depending on the light position. I think for him, well, let's see. Hmm, how do I want to do this? Let's go ahead and fill in the hair with one value and just work with the um, single tonal mass. So I'm looking for like a middle range. I'm just gonna fill it all in, even to the side plane of the head. There you go. And all the shadow down here, I'm gonna lose a lot of this information, I'm trying to, still trying to decide how much I want to lose. Do I want the background to kind of fill in too? Or just keep it really simple? I'm not sure. Hmm. Let me just go ahead and fill it in and then I'll decide. So we got the tie. Got his jacket over here. I can come in and kind of clean that up if I want to. So we have this really strong cast shadow on the hand. And we can make that edge really nice and crisp. And then as it moves further away, it gets soft. Keeping with that general concept. I'm thinking about how to vignette it, how to like finish it off, like how to present it as one piece. And I think I'm gonna put in some value in the background. I think that'll create a lot more atmosphere and kind of like maybe like like a smoky background or something. Like he's like a magician or something. So I'm gonna pull this all the way through, just fill it all the way in. There we go, that looks better. I kinda like the just the simple line drawing, to tell you the truth, but this feels good too, so. Even though this is really bright white, because of the collar, but there's still a lot of value in it. So I'm gonna pull that value in there. Let's get that shoulder kind of peeking through a little bit in the background. This one too, just a little bit. 
kind of give it some structure. Some people I hate using their finger. They hate that I use my finger to blend. Um, I understand that because the, the oils in the finger kind of can mess up the paper. But this is just a smooth newsprint, and I'm not really. It's not going to be around for very long. It'll if, it'll turn yellow and everything, and I don't know. I just feel like it's more of a demo or it's an exercise paper. So I don't, I don't worry too much about it. And plus, it's the way I learned at um, uh, art school, Watts Atelier, so I'm so used to it. And uh, if I want an archival, I have paper over here, the Strathmore 400. And that one, I don't, I don't use my finger to blend. I'll use um, blend, blending sticks for sure. And yeah, if those are going to stick around for like 100 years or so. But um, this paper, smooth newsprint, it'll... It'll pretty much just start rotting. <laughs> if I have it on the wall and it's like facing like a, a window or something, yeah, good luck if it lasts like a few months. Um, it'll turn yellow fast and then it'll start to deteriorate, especially if, it, if it's getting like direct sunlight. Yeah, it just gets really brittle and falls apart. But um, I generally use these for demonstration and practice, like a daily practice. And it's kind of nice too because when I first started at Watts Atelier, every drawing I did was like, this is going to be the drawing that I'm known for, blah, blah, blah. It was like in my head, like every drawing had to be archival and last forever. And, and it, I let that go when I went to Watts Atelier because they, they're, they're, um, they taught us to think about it as a practice uh, more and get the mileage in, right? So. You have stacks and stacks and stacks of drawings, and if each paper costs like five bucks, you're gonna be broke real quick. So, whereas these are, I don't know how much these are. are these per page, I'm not sure. Maybe five, seven cents, maybe more like eight cents, something like that. So, frees you up to, you know, make mistakes and try things out. So, versus like archival paper and stuff. And I actually have this new eraser, and I hate it. It's falling apart in my hand right now. I don't like it. I bought a generic uh, batch. I forgot the name of the company off of Amazon. It was really cheap, and I can see why now. It's, it's like sticking and adhering to my finger. And it might be because of the humidity, but I don't know. I, I never had this problem before with like the, um, the more expensive uh, kneaded eraser brands. So I'm not I'm not feeling this one. I tell you that it's getting really sticky. Like it's making my finger stick to the pencil. <laughs> Feels gross. I'm gonna make this the back side of the hair a little bit darker. Now I'm afraid to use my finger because I got all this gunk from the kneaded eraser on it. I'm afraid it's gonna stick to the paper. So I'm gonna walk around and kind of pump up the uh, the edges, the line work again, because it's it's kind of been pushed down with all the uh, the values I had just put in. And I'm gonna look for occlusion shadows and kind of pump those up too. Those are the areas of the shadow where light doesn't um, bounce into too much. So definitely in the pupils. Um, and the cast shadow is right up underneath the thing that's causing the cast shadow, like here underneath the nose. That's a good spot. Inside the nostrils, another good spot. The, those occlusion shadows. And the eye sockets and little pockets. There's a lot going on in his eyelids and the structure. He's got overlapping forms all over the place. So 
So if you watch the uh, yesterday's demo, I was I was walking through it a little bit carefully because there were so many overlapping forms, like this eyelid here. Then he has like sagging skin on top of the eyelid. That's kind of like creating almost like a secondary eyelid. Hopefully everything's fine. Um, let me see. I think it did freeze, huh? A melting clock face behind him, perhaps? That's an awesome idea. Let's see. I'm trying to see if this is working. There it is, okay. It probably froze on your guys' side, but it, it looks like it's back on mine. So, hopefully it's still working. Let me double check. Let's see, I'm gonna pop out the chat for a second here. It's back, okay, good, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Scooby Club, thank you. All right, I'm back, we're back. It's back. Yes, it stopped for a second and came back, smiley face. Nice, okay, cool. All right, let's keep going. Uh, side plane of the head. So this is a good example. So this area right here, um, it's popping out. So another uh, technique I talk about a lot is uh, squinting down to see the value relationships. So when I squint down, I'm kind of like taking my eyes down softly. I'm not trying to squint to see more. I'm trying to relax the eyelids so that less light goes into my eyes. And what that does is it kind of melts everything into pools of value. And when I do that, this area is popping forward. It's competing with this area over here, the light side. This should be the more of the shadow side because we have this um, plane change right here. So when, when I squint down, I can see that I need to put value on this side to push it down so that it's subservient to the light side of the head. And you're working on that hierarchy of the values. So that's one of the, um, that's a good example of using uh, the squinting down technique to look for um, problems. Another one is just looking at your image on a computer screen in a really small version or take a photograph with your phone and shrink it down and then that also helps. Um, it kind of works in the same way as squinting down does. So at this point in the drawing I'm probably going to squint a lot. Trying to look for those value shapes, those relationships, plane changes. I'm gonna kind of try to pump up this core value, this value right here. And where's my eraser, my pen eraser, so I can get some hair texture a little bit. There's so many things going on in the shape of the hair over here. Kind of want to make this kind of pop out a little bit, but I'm not sure how much attention I want to give it. I'm going to connect it to the shadow in the background. And of course that ear is really r bright right now, but I'll come back and I'll subdue that one as well. But first I want to get this one whole area under control a little bit. Inclusion shadow underneath that bottom lip ridge. And then the upper lip, plain change. Okay. 
there's some some form that needs to be sh over here kind of showing the, how that finger is kind of sitting deep into the flesh of the neck and the jaw a little bit kind of blasted right over it so I'm going to come in and pull some value out and try to show that And that core shadow is going to be a little bit harder or um, more firm on the edge right when it comes over the bone of the chin versus in this fleshy area on the cheek. So it's going to be the core shadow is going to be a little bit softer, wider. Let me see, then we have a little crease over here, and there's another one that comes out from underneath the ear. It's hard to find that balance. So lots of squinting. <laughs> what would happen if you did a contour drawing, like a hundred of them? If you did like 10 a day? Would it be, would it get better? I mean, we always get better at stuff we do a lot, right? So maybe we get more accurate, I don't know. I'm kind of tempted to try it. I'll do it, if I do, I'll do it on my own <laughs> in a privacy, not on, uh, not on the live stream. I think that would kill my channel. I don't think anybody would watch. But I am kind of curious to see if that would work. So there's a little bit of like a, not a cash shadow, but there's this d darker value that the light's not bouncing into this area as much. The reflective light may be coming off his hand, off the walls around him. And as we get into this area, kind of tucked under underneath the jaw, it's not, it's, it's not as, um, the reflective light is not as powerful. So I'm kind of looking for that shift in value and also trying to keep with that jaw structure too. And you can pump up. You can make things you know, harder edge and then you actually see them. You can play around with those, those edge, the edge work basically. It seems like a lot of, of the artist um, personality or just style comes from edge work, uh, especially with portraits. When you're trying to get it to look like somebody, the line is pretty much going to be pretty, uh, very similar, maybe. I guess it could vary. Uh, line work definitely varies. But I like when people, I like artists that can really push the values, the edge work, and they take it to like such an extreme and it still works. Like I love that, it's, it's really fascinating. It's really hard to do, like to have like a really, have like a drawing where like there's so many lost edges and it still looks somehow um, cohesive. <laughs> and uh, that's just, that's a tale of somebody who is really good and been doing it for a very long time. Um, I really admire that kind of edge work. But for me, I'm still trying to find balance all the time so I'll do a lot of testing I'll do push and pull I'll try this and try that uh, take an edge out then I'll put it back in I don't like it and uh, make one edge you know really sharp and then decide nope I don't like that so you'll see me like test things out a lot whereas somebody who's been doing it for very much longer than I have a lot, with a lot more skill they'll put a line down and then they'll just move on I'll put an edge in and then move on. But for me, I'm still kind of like testing the waters pretty much when I'm looking at edges. Look at the back side of the hand. I'm 
I'm surprised he doesn't have like rings on or something. He, he seems like a, a ring guy to me. Maybe like a pinky ring or something. But I don't see any. I'm going to make this really soft and kind of drop off into the peripheral. That backside line for the hand. I don't mind this one being that dark, but the back side, I'm just going to let it drop away. I'm going to hint at this tie. And there's a little bit of a light value coming in here. Um, I don't like it, so I'm going to push it back down. <laughs> That's that testing all the time. Try to pop that, that collar forward a little bit and then come in here, really soften that backside up. So putting those occlusion shadows and getting those edges really sharp on those cast shadows that are close to the form that's causing the shadow really just pops that, that forward. It really works well. When I squint down, I can see this is way too dark. So let me kind of blend that together. Maybe if I and push this edge a little bit darker. Pop a little occlusion shadow in there. Yeah, now that chin is popping forward really strong. And let's go up into the nose and start working on some of the features. I've been, I've been in this lower region for a little, a little while and it's good, it's good to get away from stay in one area too long. Uh, there's You don't see a highlight, a really strong highlight on his nose in the reference. Uh, maybe, a, mm, it's just not, I, I wanna make it look more like like a shiny, like a shiny oily nose, where you get that really strong highlight. Some people call it the uh, snowflake. <laughs> Let's see, is my eraser almost dead? Oh, it is, wow. It's okay, I got some more somewhere. Uh, so let's pull out this kind of highlight right there. Build up value around it. If this was a painting, I would probably make his nose a little bit more red, uh, like a ruddy kind of a look. And red is a pretty dark value. Even though it's, it's vibrant, it's still on the darker side. Then I can bring this plane change and connect it, the plane change on the side of the nose, and then maybe run it right into the curve of that nasal labial fold. And we can even come in here right in this little catch, they call it a catch light area. That's a really common area you see like a strong highlight, if not just like a secondary kind of highlight. Let's do a bridge light, kind of highlight on the bridge a little bit. Another catch area is right here, right up into that corner in the eye socket.
I forgot to look. I was gonna look up the name of this this anatomical feature right in the inside of the eye socket. Uh, when we get older, a lot of people have this kind of like tear teardrop looking bag kind of sitting in the corner of the eye, and it's kind of puffy. This spot right here, and I forgot the name, or I forgot to look up what the name of it was. I'm pretty sure it's in my um, my uh, plastic surgery facial book. Um, that I got from uh, a plastic surgeon wrote the book and they talk about different features like that and how to fix it basically <laughs> I think for this one they cut like a like a piece of flesh out and then that'll bring the eyebrows up and then that stretches that section out it's pretty crazy what they can do and I don't know if so if you guys remember, I had uh, like a chunk, <laughs> a chunk cut out of my forehead from a, a skin cancer, like um, the good kind. If you want to get skin cancer, it's the good kind where they just cut it out. Um, luckily, it was just uh, that one. I think it's basal cell. And uh, but the the guy that did the uh, the surgery he was talking about the angle at which they do it so that the um, the eyebrow doesn't get affected because I mine was up here and so he was saying if you cut straight across and, and stitch this way and then it would pull my eyebrow straight up so they did it the opposite way they did it um, where they, they they did a football shape basically and then they brought those two sides together and then stitch it this way so it didn't affect the uh, the shape of the eyebrow which I thought was really interesting So they know how to manipulate um, the skin on the face and they'll make certain little incisions to lift up the brow and stuff like that. So I thought that was really cool. Uh, let's see, let's come over here. I like, I like how bright the forehead is and I kind of want to keep it that way. Very, just keep it very simple. And, and then all the, the more detail in the eyes and, and de definitely down here. A lot more value in the drawing and then up here is far less value I think that I like that look so kind of gives it a uh, I don't want to say creepy but kind of I don't know it just looks cool so I'm gonna try to do that and let me work on this eye kind of made it a little too shut shut off it, his eyes really wide open so let me open it back up And then we got this wrapping around. So if you want, so I talked a lot about the eye yesterday when I was drawing it, but basically on this far side eye, I always talk about this eye because it's so important to show that wrapping around that, that perspective. So you're not gonna see two points of the eye, like here we have the outside and we have the inside. This one you have the inside, but you don't see the outside because it's tucked around the back side of the eyeball. So you, you want to, think about that and also sh kind of think about the the form of the the um, the forms of the uh, the eyelid wrapping around too so you can kind of push those a little bit and show them kind of tucked in behind that far side eyeball Let's see, I'm gonna hit some straight hard lines over here, especially on this bone. And then maybe down here a little softer. I'm gonna do some hard edges on the mustache to try to make that kind of pop forward a little bit more. Especially over here, this is really important. Because this is in the foreground and it's in front of the portrait basically, because it's not it's not laying on his face, it's like it's like some sort of insect coming at you. Oh, it comes down and it's attached down here, it looks like. Okay.
such a fun portrait. And let's hit some, uh, take out some value for the upper ridge of the lip. And then a little bit of a highlight on the bottom lip. It's funny, like the eraser, I love this pen eraser. It's almost like it is drawing uh, using the eraser. So if you have a lot of value, you put a lot of value down in a certain area, and then you can come in and kind of give it some texture. You can play around with those kind of forms a little bit better, get a little bit more dexterity. I just like it. I like it for the texture mostly. A little cross hatching using the, uh, the eraser, it's kind of fun. It looks kind of neat too. I'm going to pull out some of these lighter areas. Oh man, I hate this eraser. <laughs> it's it's sticking. It feels uh oh, feels like glue. And it's building up on my fingertip too. Ugh. I don't. Know, I don't know if you guys had that problem with the needed erasers. I don't remember having this much problem with the. Um, uh, I forgot the name of the brand. Uh, Castell, whatever it is. But this one, I don't know the name of it. I just it came in a pack of like eighteen or something like that for a pretty good price. So. Unfortunately, I have a lot of them now. <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to put some details on his eyebrows. Have some fun with those shapes. Let's see. This one kind of curves and falls back down, so I can do like a little bit of a highlight. I'm kind of trying to show that eyebrow. Like it curls up and then goes back down. Yeah, he's got some wild eyebrows. That's cool. I'm going to pump up this eye a little bit more. I'm going to get that pupil as dark as I can. It's going to be the darkest dark, and it's going to be right next to the lightest light, that highlight. And then I'll kind of blend it out a little bit. Get that limbus, the rim of the iris, really strong and dark. And gently work that shading into the shape of the shadows and the eye eyelid as well. And really try to pop that eye forward. Pull that highlight highlight out a little bit more and maybe try to get that glassy look to the eye. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Maybe not as strong because I want to keep this kind of like sinking into the background more and not competing with this eye. So maybe I'll just leave that. So that's kind of like thinking about um, the concept of density. Uh, so like those, those artists that I was talking about where they really push that concept of um, losing edges and stuff. A lot of times on this far side eye, the value scale it drops down. It doesn't get as dark and it's a little bit um, softer in value and less details as well. More bigger shapes, like shadow shapes, on the far side, and that really helps sink it down. And then you start to feel like the head is in this atmosphere, kind of a three-dimensional look. Um, let's come over here and kind of pump up this coarse shadow under the nose. Not coarse shadow, excuse me, the occlusion shadow. There we go. That's coming along pretty good. I'm going to go back to this ear and I'm going to scumble in. And I think I'm using that term right. I asked somebody what they meant by scumble and this is what they said, like kind of just putting in a bunch of value really quickly in a light side. 
in a very kind of like gentle way. So I'm using no pressure, really just letting the pencil sit on the paper and going back and forth until the value changes to a point where I think it looks okay. See, so we got this this skin on the back of the neck kind of goes up and over. I'm gonna go a little darker in the back side of this portrait. I'm gonna try this out, see what that looks like. Trying to hint at that at that tie without it taking too much attention. I think if I go a little bit darker over here. Squinting. <laughs> I'm squinting a lot. To try to see those values. So that hand just drops off. I think this has too much of a border. So it's experimental a lot and when you're dealing with edges and trying to find a balance of things, at least for me. And let's come over here and make this a little bit kind of darker in the corner. I like how this area is popping forward, get that three-dimensional look. Let's go up and under, under the nose and a little bit more of the occlusion shadow and fanning out from underneath the nose a little bit more. Let's see. I'm gonna put a little bit more structure in this forehead. Where's the other crease? So I got one, two. I just want to get somewhere in the right direction. And I can come over here and kind of do that little highlight you see in the, uh, the shadow or the, uh, the hair. Oh, this eraser. Where's my other one? Let me grab my other eraser real quick. I can reach it with my pencil. No. Oh, this one's sticky too. Okay. Ugh. Be gone. <laughs> Be gone from me. This one's cold at least. Maybe it's because it got too hot in my hand. Maybe. Maybe that's why, I don't know. Let's see. Let's... Last week I even tried put it, putting it in the freezer and see if that would help. And then I forgot. I, I meant to put it in for like five minutes and then I forgot and then later that night I, I pulled it out and of course it's like a rock. But um, I don't know. I'm gonna take out more of this detail. I like that really blasted out look on the forehead. Uh, at least for right now. I'll probably change it later. Who knows? Let's see. Okay, 
Now I'm going to put some texture in the hair. Try to show it kind of like wrapping around. Try to give it some form. It's a little too dark. There we go. And that curl over here, I don't know. Let me try to make that pop out a little bit. Too much. What a weird hairstyle. See how dark that was, so we can just come in, push it down. Let's build up some more value in the back. Connect it to the shoulder. Pretty much at this point on, it could be <laughs> it can be uh, several hours of just playing around with um, edge work and trying different things out. At least that's how I like to. I usually put like a podcast on and I just kind of relax and just have fun with uh, experimenting. But the process is pretty much the same. It is I start off with that basic head construction like we did yesterday and then going into the Riley rhythms and and building up the head structure and then looking for the, the shadow mapping. And then now we do some of the value and we're and you go into the single tonal mass, think about the forms and planes of the head and <clears throat> and hard edges versus soft edges. That helps a lot. So again like up here you get a little harder edge maybe right there. Definitely over here, then as you move away from the source of the cast shadow, it'll get softer and softer. I like I like this rhythm on this side. This is almost like a perfect triangle coming straight across. I just now realized. <laughs> That's cool. I like that. So you got this triangle that's sit, sitting right here in this lower portion of the face. That's neat. I like that, that muzzle line just sitting right on top of his knuckle right there. That's like my, I think that's what drew me to this portrait to draw. And of course the mustache. All right. I think that's pretty much it. I'm going to work on this some more today. Um, like I said, I'm going to put a podcast on or some music and just have fun uh, trying out different shadow shapes and stuff but most of it's done I just if I you know how much detail do I want to put in like 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 this area here I'll blast in a lot of tone and it's pretty simple and then after the fact I can come in with my eraser or both the eraser and the uh, the pencil and create more detail like the crow's feet and you can really, really take it up a notch once you get the like the base down, right? Just the overall pockets of value. And then you can come in and really, really put in a, a lot of cool details. Let's see, how about right here? A little bit of a highlight. Maybe his mustaches. 
It's got all this wax in it, so maybe it's a little bit shiny. Uh, do I want to highlight in hand? No, I want to keep it, keep it pushed down. Let's see. All right, guys. So that's pretty much it for him today. That was a really fun one. I'm not sure what I'm going to do tomorrow. To tell you the truth, I'll, um, I'll work on that today. Try to figure out if I want to do another portrait or what. Um, yeah, but same time tomorrow at uh, 11:30. Uh, AM my time if I didn't forget something this time <laughs> sometimes I forget there's I have a schedule uh, or a I don't know like a doctor's checkup or something I forgot about I, I, but I don't think there's anything tomorrow so definitely uh, we'll do something tomorrow I'm not sure exactly what maybe another portrait or I don't know if I can find like hi Thanks for coming. Or if I can find some, I've been. I still look around and try to come, think about ideas for a cyborg, kind of like a character design again. I'm not really sure. Ron, how when you have gone too dark, do you lighten it? I see you tap the rubber. Yeah. Do you recommend that I get patchy results? I suppose you build up layers to the dark. Yeah, pretty, that's exactly right. Uh, so if I go too dark in an area, I'll tap it out with the eraser, and I'll try to like connect the areas together with another shape, so it doesn't look so patchy. So I try to like make make one patch connect to another patch, and the bigger it is, uh, joined together, and then maybe it joins into another area as well. Um, it helps connect it all together, so that it's less likely to look patchy. Um, so you can do that and then you can break it up again and see how far you can get away with it. And, and then if it looks pat too patchy, then you can kind of join those, those, those shapes together again with something else nearby. So that's like that push and pull that happens over and over. So yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Let's see. Someone asked for a manga or comic book style drawing that was three stream ago, I think. Oh yeah. Hey, hello, so I am from India. Hey, India. Yeah, I need to check my Instagram. I think the the person was going to send it on Instagram. Actually, I think I did check that one. Anyway, I'll look again. I think it was it Ghost in the Shell. I don't know. I don't remember. But maybe I'll do another one. I'm going to do another. That was a fun cyborg. I think I did a few months ago. That was a lot of fun. It was like three streams and three hours each or something like that, two hours each. Neighbors smiley face. I'm pull out some of these highlights. Yes, ghost in the shell. Yeah, that's such a oh man, that was such a rad movie. <laughs> the first time I saw it in high school. Oh jeez, that was so cool. Let's see. I saw it in the art in the art department at in high school. Somebody brought it in. 11.24 p.m. time here. That's not, well, that's like 11.24, that's cool. That's not bad. That's a good time of day to draw, that's for sure. So I can just come in here and just play around the hair shapes, get, get all these crazy details. I'm from Nepal, Nepal. Nepal, what's up? Thanks for coming. So I don't think I'll do another contour tomorrow. <laughs> India. India, what's up? But uh, yeah, that was fun. At least try it out. Um, but I much. The Peter Battle Angel is like that too, but less guns and more blades. Smiley face. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, got it. More blades and less guns. What was I going to say? I was going to say something about the, uh, oh, I like the upside down drawing much better as an exercise than, uh, I think the contour, I think it's just too frustrating. I don't, I don't know if I'm got enough patience for the contour, blinded contour drawing, but let me, uh, where are they? 
Oh, here's that last one again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was, yeah, I drew a tail. <laughs> her head was supposed to be over here. Those are her fingers. And got that foot in okay, but boy, it really went a weird way over here. <laughs> That's so bizarre. So anyway, oh, got Dolly done. Thanks guys for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you. And um, yeah, I'm going to make a t-shirt out of that. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, so tomorrow, I don't know what to do yet. Um, I'll look around uh, today and uh, tonight and see if I can come up with something kind of cool to um, maybe... See you tomorrow. Make a project out Your of or something. The drawing and the Dali reference photo are awesome. Thank you. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. And check out the course. It's 20% off. Uh, summer sale. Uh, use the promo code 2 hot sale. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Go to bed. Get some sleep. Thanks, guys. See you next time. See you tomorrow. Bye.